Episode four of Chew On This. <laughs> wow. We made it this far. <laughs> and it seems like you guys did too. <laughs> I think today, today's topic is something that isn't as glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> you can't <laughs> start it off like that. <laughs> isn't as glamorous, isn't as fun, but it's probably the fundamental like basis of building a business. Yeah. I think I want to lead off with a small little analogy. You know, it's like, if businesses were like high schools, right? Um, in high schools, you have a jock, mm -hmm. right? And marketing is like the jocks, right? Wow. <laughs> I'm finally you guys are the, cool, the jock. You guys are like the cool guys. <laughs> you know, everyone wants to be it and wants a little glimpse of what's going on there. Right. But it's always kind of like a shut door, right? <laughs> um, and then you have like kind of like. The, the, the nerds or the people who are the bookworms or the people who are kind of like in the library and, 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 and kind of are like just working behind the scenes, right? Right. And what's really important, and, and that's kind of like your operations and finance, right? And what I think is really important is you need both yeah. to like make the ecosystem work, right? right? You can't just have a group of jocks <laughs> to make a high school runner. You can't just have a group of, of, of nerds or bookworms or whatever you want to call them. So, so I feel like even in in building our business yeah. we've need to, we've needed to fundamentally make sure our operational framework is strong mm -hmm. so that when it comes to marketing or growth or scaling we're able to actually take that on without worrying oh will this break right and talking about breaking i think it'll be really important for people to understand what are those tools that we use in our framework right. to make sure nothing breaks when we scale. Right. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it's such an important thing to talk about just because like, well, first off, right, framework and apps and this and that that you install on your Shopify aren't going to be the reason like, you know, you, you, you find success. Like right. you need to have a good brand. You need to have a great product. That is like the, the bottom bottom line, mm -hmm. right? Then to build on top of that, you have all these tools that can basically take you to the next level, right? Yep. So let's let's start there. I don't want anybody to come at us <laughs> saying like, well, you need to have a better product. Like, okay, yes, we've yeah. established that we like, product will always win. Yeah, that's here's episode how you one. <laughs> amplify, here's how you amplify it, right? So I think um, let's get right into it. Yeah. Um, like I just said, you know, Shopify, that's like the biggest tool that I think a lot of brand builders, brand, Oh wow! Are um, utilizing for their for their e-commerce store. I'm sure, there are a bunch of other options, but the I think the biggest reason we chose Shopify was super easy, right? The fact that anybody without any coding experience can just hop on, pick a theme, install a few apps, and publish a product, and you're off to the races, right? I think the next level to that, which is Shopify Plus, which has been something that we've been utilizing quite a bit. Right, Shopify Plus, I believe, starts to make sense for brands that are hitting about a million to two million in revenue a, a year. Yeah, just because one, just by switching over, you kind of incur a lower processing or transaction fee. Uh, so that in itself, you'll save a, a ton of money, right? But the fact is, is that you can do a lot more with it, and especially within certain things like customizing your checkout, right. um, having a few more tools like flows, right? Taking a look at the checkout, if you go and look at um, Avi's checkout, we, there's a lot of stuff that we're, we're doing in there. You know, we have social proof. We have certain call-outs to make sure that the consumer is, is is can find that trust within the brand, right? So, you know, Avi served over 250,000 customers. We have our money-back guarantee. We have free shipping. Pretty much everything you would need in a checkout to feel like you're making the right decision is being done, mm -hmm. right? And you can't do that without Shopify Plus. And it, and it, and it does seem kind of silly because it's like, well, that should be a standard for all. But listen, if you are getting past that, you know, that, that seven figure mark or that one to two million, these are the things that are going to improve um, your business drastically, right? Yeah. So Shopify Plus, number one. So the second one, um, we kind of talked about this on the previous episode, which is CRO, right? And this may not be an app, but having some type of team that focuses on the CRO or otherwise known as conversion rate optimization is crucial for improving conversion rate, improving AOV, yep. um, especially in a time when acquisition costs are going up, you need to have a optimized website. So that in itself needs to be figured out, whether it's a team um, or an agency or an individual. Third, 
Um, I believe a lot of people started using this after uh, Mailchimp fumbled the bag, <laughs> and um, they. Sad. <laughs> I know it is sad because I mean we started off on Mailchimp. Yeah, super RIP. easy, super like clean UX UI. Uh, but I think Clavio is you know one for the marketers. Yeah. Uh, super powerful. Um, that's what we've been using for email marketing. Um, they've been adding insane features, you know, month over month, and you know, it's it's crucial for for retention. Yeah. Um, next to email is SMS. And you know, shout out to the guys at Postscript. Um, you know, we have team. such a great team with them, especially on Postscript Plus. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the girls that have been handling you know the account for for a few months now, especially during this Q4. Yeah. It's yeah. it's been it's been hectic, and they've been on the ball. But Postscript is great. SMS, yeah. you know, campaigns, automations, everything, um, super crucial for retention. Um, you know, we've been dabbling in generating leads as well. You know, just through like Facebook and and trying to use that as a another acquisition channel. You know, funneling people into our Postscript account and kind of just taking them down a journey just on SMS. So Postscript, you know, huge huge platform. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Another great app that we're using right now. Uh, we just onboarded a few months ago. Uh, Wonderment. Wonderment is basically it's it, they're providing the consumer an experience during their whole transaction journey um, right up to delivery, right? So the biggest thing is is that people are always going to be tracking their orders. Yep. Um, that experience in itself, just like, you know, Shopify out of the box isn't great, right? right? You get an email, it says track your order, it'll go to the UPS website or USPS website, whatever it is. Um, Wonderment makes that entire user interface for you where it's yeah. a little bit more cleaner and it's hosted on your website, right? So you as the brand are getting all that traffic back mm -hmm. instead of sending it to a third party third side, party. right? Yep. What I really like about Wonderment is that one, you have the estimated delivery dates, you can see everything that's going on, but you can also build on that page a little bit of upselling, a little bit of, you know, customer education. This way, like I, I look at it and it's it's our second it's our second visited Second highest visited uh, page. page on the website daily. That's crazy. Yeah, next to the homepage. Oh, next to the homepage, right? yeah. So it's utilizing insane. that page is so crucial, and Wonderman does such a great job at you know being able to customize that that experience. So definitely would uh, check them out. Subscriptions. Um, I think there's been a lot of talk about it on on DC Twitter and and everywhere else. Um, which app do you use, right? Yeah. Um, we were with Recharge for for quite a bit. That I mean, them and Bold were like the number one. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It, it was like monopolized. It was yeah. So like you're 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 not not gonna go with them. Um, you're pretty much going with them just out of the fact that they're the you search subscriptions. That's what's coming up, right? Um, to be honest, like didn't really love the fact that we didn't get any support from Recharge. Um, that was probably one of the biggest reasons that we left them. Um, and we ended up going to Retaction. Um, in my opinion, honestly, we've been using protection since like July, um, 10 times better, right? And and just purely based on the fact that there's like actual support that I can talk to um, is huge. Yeah. Um, I remember when we moved from Shopify 1.0 to 2.0, we lost our subscription widget with Recharge. And I was reaching out to support for weeks and no nobody was getting back to me. Like this is how you make money off of us Yeah. is us providing subscription <laughs> through your service and you didn't want to fix it, right? Yeah. So the fact that, you know, Retection got us up and running in literally like two weeks, um, huge. Yep. Um, I mean, the functionality is insane. The reporting is unreal. Um, we actually saw a lower churn rate mm. uh, just because the user experience, like the portal side is 10 times better. better. And um, we could do a lot of things like offers, cross-selling, upselling. So um, shout out to the team, the Retection team. Um, if you have a subscription model on your business, I would highly, highly recommend checking them out. Another big uh, app that we've been using is uh, Cardhook, yeah. right? Uh, Cardhook is super important to kind of increase your AOV. Um, a lot of people try to make the first order super optimized for AOV, and it oftentimes hurts conversion rate, right? So you have a funnel that you're running, Facebook, send it to a landing page, and you're trying to sell them on everything, right? Single product, bundle, you know, alternative product that's really good, that works really well with the first product, this and that, right? That becomes very messy and very confusing. So if you can optimize your funnel for conversion rate and, and, and AOV in the sense where, you know, like if you look at our funnel, right, we sell 
um, the collagen protein, a single bottle, and then we sell a bundle next to it, which is buy any three flavors and you get a discount, right? So the buy more, save more element to it, and it's not confusing because you right. either want to try it or you're like, okay, I'm going all in on this, right? So that's one way to, to help conversion rate. But the, the, the next step after that is post-checkout right. where – They've already committed to the product. They've committed to the brand or at least trying it. How can I get them to spend a little bit more so that I can add a little bit more padding to to my uh, my AOV, yeah. right? So that's cart hook. Basically, you know, it's like, all right, right before you hit, you know, check out completely, we have this one offer of, you know, get 25 to 30% off that same item that you've just purchased, but get it in another flavor or a limited edition flavor. And we've seen them. like... 20% opt-ins for that, yeah. which is it's just crucial to adding, you know, a few more dollars to the to the AOV. Um, so definitely check out Cardhook. Another app that we've been using for uh, a while now, um, Octane. Octane mm. AI. Uh, Shout out, Ben. Build, yeah, no, these guys, Matt and Ben, are, 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 are great. great guys. Um, they've, you know, kind of come up with this app called Octane um, that – you're allowed to kind of create a quiz on on your website, right? Especially for a brand like us, because we have so many products. Mm -hmm. The number one question that we get is like, where do I even start, right? right? And I think the best way to approach that is with a personalized quiz, right? Um, so you take the quiz and it kind of asks you like, all right, what are your goals? What's your lifestyle like? What are you looking to improve? Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. What's your diet like? And not only are you kind of tailoring answers around that data, but it's zero-party data that us as a brand can collect that we may not get from, you know, a Facebook or a TikTok. Like, this is, like, this is information that they're providing directly to you yeah. that nobody else has, First right? party. So the fact that they can integrate with Klaviyo, you in the back end can now utilize that data. Like, okay, this person wants to um, kind of achieve their weight loss goals, but, you know, somewhere down the quiz, they've answered that they don't like caffeine, right? Now, we have a couple of products for weight loss, and we have caffeine options, and we don't have caffeine options, right? right? So now, instead of grouping these people all together for just weight loss and hitting them with, like, products they may or may not be able to have, I can at least segment those people out yeah. and send them down a funnel where, hey, let me just show you the products that you can actually have, right? Correct. So that that difference right there can can improve conversion rate drastically and can improve the LTV um, just because you're actually showing the right product right. to the right person. Um, so yeah, Octane, set it up. It's really good for uh, retention, right? We're, we're, we're going to do something for uh, gift guides yep. in December, right? So, you know, um, you want to, you want to do something for gifting this season, what's your budget, what is that person like, their flavor, whatever. And you kind of suggest something that way. So it's great for, for retention. It's great for acquisition. Um, definitely worth checking out. Kind of getting into the, the big boys, um, shout out to Tapcart. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, one of our, you know, great, uh, sponsors for the, for the podcast, but we've been using Tapcart since almost the inception of, of Avi, right? Um, we were able to turn our store into an app. And one of the biggest values of Avi is community. And we, you know, we have our Facebook community, but what we wanted to do is amplify that a little bit more. And not only do we just have a storefront on the app, but we allow users to come in and, you know, get access to recipes, get access to videos. They can manage their subscriptions, they can manage their rewards, they can do everything more than just like, because you could just go to the website and buy. Of course. Right? Of course. But at least giving them a place where they can get more value and hang out if they want to, like that yeah. is crucial. And like that actually in itself makes the price point worth it. Yeah. Right? Um, it makes up 10% of our revenue. Conversion rate is, you know, higher on the app. AOV is higher on the app. And ultimately improves LTV. Right? right? Um, you know, the guys at Tapcart, you know, allowed us to give you guys mm -hmm. um, a pretty solid offer. So if you are looking to, um, you know, design an app for your brand, super easy, no code. It's literally like a drag and drop builder. Like I built the app for us in like a week. Yeah, um, it literally takes a week. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, but if you are looking to get, you know, your own app for your own brand, they are offering three free months right now. Um, so check the link, I believe, in our description or whatever the bio, but check them out. Um, tell them, you know, we sent you, get the three free months. Yep. It's a no-brainer. Another one of our sponsors, uh, <laughs> Postpilot, um, 
This is something that's like been on everybody's minds lately, but like people are scared to kind of get involved because yeah. it's so like against the grain. Uh, but Postpilot is, I would say, like the Clavio of direct mail. Yeah. Right, like snail mail, like in your mailbox, you know. What we've been doing recently is utilizing it for retention purposes at the moment. Um, you know, we sent out a pretty big blast for a Black Friday sale. Mm -hmm. I think it's really crucial for brands to utilize right now because one, you're not collecting everybody's data in the sense you're not getting everybody's phone numbers, right? Mm -hmm. um, email very tough to get a hundred percent open rate and if you do great right but like <laughs> it's not possible right now right 100%. um so how can you get a hundred percent deliverability and that i believe is through uh direct mail yeah because especially if you have their addresses you Absolutely. can hit everybody right so definitely check out post pilot um the first campaign we sent we saw a thousand percent roi like one thousand percent ROI. Ridiculous. I believe we spent a thousand dollars. We made ten thousand dollars back. Um, so the numbers are there, and it was a reactivation campaign too. So these were people who haven't bought in like three to four months, yeah. and they came back, right? Yeah. So if you are looking to improve retention, if you're looking to hit the customers that have kind of turned out, definitely check out Post Pilot. Um, they have also given us a really cool deal that you can take advantage of, which is, I believe the first 500, 500 yeah. um, postcards, postcards are free. Are free. Yeah. So it's a no-brainer. Yeah, it's literally it a no-brainer. Yeah. They design everything for you. They'll pretty much help you segment segment everything out. Um, so check them out. Post by, link is in the description, bio. Check them out. And then the biggest one of them all, <laughs> um, I wouldn't even call it an app. It's basically an operating system, yeah. uh, Triple Whale. Um, I, I couldn't say more about them. Like that team is unreal. Yeah. Um, you know, shout out to the guys, AJ, Max, Raba. I mean, they have developed something that literally I would attribute us lowering our CAC by half because of Triple Oil. Mm. It's it's not just an attribution tool. It's it's a lot more than that, right? We can we can view our finances on a minute to minute basis, right? Are we profitable? at this minute, right? Um, right? There's a few key things that I look at day to day, which is, yeah, the attribution, are my ads performing the way that Facebook says they are, right? Um, what's our new customer acquisition for the day, right? How many, what's our what's our AOV on the new customers, right? right. So those are powerful. things that, really like those powerful. are the things that I couldn't see early last year. Yeah. And I was kind of like, you would have to like download a report, you yeah. have to like, all right, how many new customers? How much was fully the new manual. revenue? Yeah, fully manual. Like we hired an analyst yeah, to like start crazy. doing all that because it's such a manual process. Triple Wheel literally every second refresh will update those numbers and yeah. like that's huge. Um, they integrate with every single app that I've mentioned. Yeah. Um, so it's crucial for any brand that's you know trying to scale. I would definitely look into it because it's not just attribution, it's everything right. else too, right? So I think you're gonna get into a little bit of the finance part of it, but on a marketing sense, it's sure. it's how I keep an eye on the numbers yeah. on a on an acquisition front and then retention front too. So shout out to them. Um, I believe if you use the code Avi, you'll get 20% off. Wow. Which I don't think I'm allowed to give, but <laughs> 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 sorry, Rob. Um, but yeah, check it out. Um, use code Avi. And then the last one, um, super, super underrated, uh, Georgia's. You know, we utilize it for our customer service, tickets and everything. Um, customer experience is so undervalued right now. Yep. Um, and it's, it's one crazy. of the biggest levers to improving retention, right? The yeah. minute somebody has an issue, and it could be like the smallest thing, like, oh, my shaker cup was broken. How we handle that yeah. can dictate whether or not that customer that I paid $50 for is going to come back later or not. Right. Right. The fact that it's easy to kind of, you know, have these emails come in, um, they get tagged differently, right? If somebody has a product that's broken, all right, this gets tagged. We can say, okay, we're going to reship, right? right? This this customer is missing an item. Boom. We, we know how to handle that right away. Or if somebody just has like a bad experience, like that, how do we handle that in a yeah. most efficient manner? And, and, and it's Georgia's. So yeah, the shout, tool's incredible. Yeah. Um, so I would definitely check out all the above. Oh, 
I'm out of breath. <laughs> need, a, need a sip. Uh, shout out to uh, Vasa from uh, so Perfect. Good. It's um, so good. Superfood soda, really cool. L theanine and, and ashwagandha. So shout out to Vasa. Thank I gotta you for subscribe to this. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Thank I you, mean. Vasa. What do you, what do you, I've that's, been talking a lot, sorry No, guys. it's power, that's, that's extremely powerful stuff. So for marketing, uh, retention, acquisition, those are the 12 must-have apps. Um, what do you got for them on the finance end? Oh, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, a lot of the finance um, tools that we use and, and the services that we use, um, it's important because a lot of the tools out there, it's not stuff that hasn't been around. It's the fact that it's like, it f plays in this FinTech space, which is like, it's finance tools that understand what you're doing as a D2C business. So, you know, for us, Triple Whale, in terms of just being able to be our FinHub too, um, you know, a lot of the people chalk it up to, oh, it's just an attribution tool. Um, and I think what you said is perfect. It's an operating system. Um, you plug in there, you start it up, it's one screen on your monitor and, uh, from there, you go to what part you want. And I think for um, us in the finance side, it's like, all right, we're in the FinHub, get to see what we made yesterday, what we're on pace to make today, where we are month to date, year to date, year over year. And like within 30 seconds, you have a full landscape of what's going on. <laughs> and I think that's so powerful um, on, a, on a finance piece. And, you know, there are annoying parts to it, which is you have to sit down and put all your cost of goods in. You have to sit down and put all information in. But imagine one day of hard work now paints the picture for the rest of your business. Um, pretty powerful. One of the other big concepts we've been talking about, especially in today's climate, has been the options of buy now, pay later, right? Um, businesses have it. Consumers have it. I mean, on the consumer end, um, I, know, I think we've tried them all probably, but, um, you know, going from Sezzle to Klarna and all of them, I think the one that we've loved and, and stuck with the most is Afterpay. Um, and I think even on the, the fact that they have a marketing piece to it too, which you can run ads on their own platform, you can touch on so much for your consumer and what you can offer them. Um, it, it's just very powerful um, to be able to give a consumer the ability to break down their payments in one, while they're in a climate where pre-recession, post-recession, whatever you want to call it, it's tough times right now. So another big part of our finance tool stack is when we need money, we better be able to draw on it. Um, and luckily for us, the need for money has been more of like strategic financial manipulation of, okay, if we can use cheaper money here to get more time here so that we can focus on this here, that's really why we use the money. And so we love using tools like Upside Financing, which gives us up to 120 days with maximum of 4% of interest rate, which again, when people annualize that, that's a lot, 13, 14%. But when you look at it in a compartmentalized, you're basically paying very little interest to get a lot of time to figure your business out. Um, we also love Wayflyer. Uh, the team over there, incredible. Um, they have great programs. Like you can actually get net terms on your TikTok spend, you can get really good line of credits, uh, just a great finance tool. And they actually stack really well with what I'm about to talk about next. Um, and, um, you know, one of our most utilized tools and probably one of the most powerful tools, I think, in the D2C community right now um, is Parker and, <laughs> and a sponsor of our, our, our podcast. Um, but even if they weren't a sponsor, I just don't think we'd stop talking about them yeah. because um, and, and we've seen every single one of our friends in the space, network, Twitter followers, LinkedIn connections. Um, I don't know if you're not on Parker, I often ask just why, <laughs> just only because it's, it's net 60 interest free. Um, I almost wish Parker had a personal credit yeah. card because like, <laughs> it's just incredible. Why yeah. wouldn't I take 60 days to pay something off? Yeah. Um, and so being able to utilize a tool where you can take 60 days to pay something off and it's a rolling term without having a cycle attached to it, it's really powerful. Um, and so again, one of the things is like, whether we're using Wayflyer, Upside Financing or Parker, these are tools to help us get better runway. Yes, of course, and we've talked about that in previous episodes, but more importantly, it's the tools that help us lay our foundation 
of when we need it, it's ready to go. Right. And that's the difference between traditional banks and fintech tools, right? Uh, fintech tools take seconds, sometimes milliseconds to get up and running. Even when we talked about capital raise, why are we using AngelList versus using an investment bank mm. like Goldman Sachs to raise our money, right? right. It's like, it's, it's the ability to do things fast, do it efficiently, effectively. Every tool we've talked about today, right, has been has had that kind of theme. So I think that's one of the, the biggest pieces. And then I think another sponsor of our po of the podcast, but something that just isn't talked about enough yeah. um, is plastic. Plastic is probably a tool that we utilize almost every day, if not every other day. Um, and what's really powerful about it is, is they have a bill pay option. So imagine everything funnels there. You take all your payments that you have to make or payments that are coming in, and then you let it navigate from there. So you can say, hey, this goes here. This is supposed to be booked to this. This is supposed to be booked to this. It's really powerful to see these tools um, be able to give you that power at your fingertips. And then secondly, what's really cool about plastic is they're able to take any ACH you owe. So let's just say somebody sends you a bill and says, I need you to pay me now, right? But doesn't take credit card, right? You're probably going to go to your bank account or, or write a check. They let you pay that person or that vendor via credit card. And so our favorite stack is Parker Plastic together because we're able to pay an ACH with net 60 terms and credit card. So again, a lot of what we've talked about here are just tools that gives us the runway, but more so the operational backing. Right. Um, and then lastly, I think on the finance end, um, we really, really value kind of how we look at our books, how we build out our kind of team there. Um, we've been using two tools. Um, one is um, we've been outsourcing our CFO through mm -hmm. Fully Accountable, which is really great. We get a CFO call once a week, basically does our modeling for us mm -hmm. for the entire year. And then we use a tool called Finaloop. Finaloop's a really, really cool tool because it actually is a system there to replace your accountant. So you have an accountant who's basically going in and booking things and saying, this expense just came in, it goes to this part of the chart accounts, right? Sorry for those people who are not into accounting, but um, <laughs> basically trying to book everything. To, so making sure that your end of month PL or balance sheet is, is tied in. Right. What Finaloop created, it was an automated way, an AI technology mm. that's smart and knows something that came in last month, mm. goes the same place or gets adjusted. So imagine having a, ro a robot that's an accountant. <laughs> uh, it's, it's the way the world's going. So, you know, great tool there. So. We really, really love utilizing kind of th this kind of stack for us to get to not even just got to get us to our first million, but got us to now 30 million, you know, and, and, and onwards. I think we can bring these tools along with us. So covered marketing, covered finance. And I think the the big piece that brings them together is that ops mm. and and HR right. and inventory and stuff like that. So the unsexy side. Yeah, the of, unsexy of, side. Of yeah. <laughs> um, so please don't turn off the episode right now. <laughs> um, super important. Super important stuff. Um, so really quickly, I think to, to start off in, in the op side, I think the fundamental uh, piece that is probably one of our strongest levers is having a really strong 3PL. Three, three yeah. Um, you know, so many people use so many other tools because their 3PL is weak. <laughs> and they need to have, I need a better inventory management system. Right. I need to better incoming, outgoing, counting this, better financing tools. Really, if you have a strong 3PL, so many of those problems can be solved. Right. Um, so for us, our 3PL, godsend. Middle of America, amazing pricing all across America. Um, they don't charge us for inventory management. They don't charge us for this, that. There's no hidden fees. Been using them for a year and a half. I think we've brought over 50 other D2C <laughs> brands. So... Fundamentally, I think starting with a really strong 3PL is key. Right. I think from there, we have a really, really strong order management system that we probably need to use even more, right. but right now have a really good way of just understanding how it works and and basically call it our CRM, and, it's, and it matches really well with our retail. It's called Sin7, and it links up with SPS Commerce. So we're able to look at our inventory real time and be able to almost say, okay, if this is what's coming in for retail, let's say our vitamin shop order, usually much bigger than D to C every day, 
So when that order comes in, SIN7 tells us, okay, here's the new forecast of inventory, or here's what you can expect if this order goes out, right? So it's really cool to be able to see a system that can look at D2C and retail, bring it together and, and operate differently. So a lot of when people talk about operations, they just talk about you know product, they talk about the marketing of it, the finance of it, um, but we often forget operations also revolves around the team, right? And starting off with the team is, is making sure that you have a system that can make them feel comfortable, which is your HR system, right? <laughs> um, let's face it, a lot of us D2C owners, founders, founders, um, <laughs> we don't have HR people. You know, like we don't yeah. have an HR department. It's scrappy. It, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a it's it's a, it's it's a SaaS platform, guys. <laughs> um, we use Gusto. Yeah. Um, and you know, again, I don't see too many podcasts talking about this type of stuff. But the reason we're talking about it is is sometimes people look at these things and say, "I don't need it." But the the reality is, if you have more than four people on your team, something like Gusto actually legitimizes who you are, right. even to your few employees, right? Right, Because if you don't have that and everything is a little scrappy and all those scrappy is cool, there's also something that makes sure that comfort is important, right? right? So for us, operationally, we have Gusto. Right. And uh, it gives people benefits. It automates payroll. It automates everything. And even how it greets me as a founder, it's like, Hello, Ron, here are your tasks for today, right? And it'll show me who's asked for PTO, who's, you know, uh, whose payroll is coming up, what contractor do we have to pay? So again, ease of use is you want someone to speak to you how you're kind of are hoping that other people understand on your team. So I think that's important. And then second layer within that is, um, I think it's really, really important to have an ESOP, which is an employee stock option program, right? Um, and, and I think for us, what we did was, making it available, right? Not every single employee needs a stock right away, right? Usually it comes with tenure. Right. After you spend maybe one and a half, two years at a company, oftentimes you're offered it, right? right. And I think for us, initially we were like, ah, we'll do it one day. And I think what we realized is it's much easier to just set it up, right? Um, we call we did uh, what's called phantom shares. You guys can look into it. Really, really cool process where basically people get the ability to have stock options in your company, mm -hmm. but they're not on your cap table. So it's all official, but it doesn't have to go to every single investor. So protects the company, but also protects um, the employee. Um, and then I think, you know, talking a lot about team, you can talk a little bit more about like how we empower our team maybe. So as a startup, right? Um, I'm going to keep using the word scrappy, but everything that we do has always been scrappy. And it's always been like, get the job done, no matter how you get it done, right? So when it comes down to like even our employees, it's not like, all right, you're here from nine to five and you just have to be there, right? Um, right. You know, coming up with like a, a flex schedule where they can get things done on their time and then also making sure that it's aligned with our goals, yeah. right? So for example, you know, we're work from home on Fridays, um, but that doesn't mean like, people are just off and running about, but like right. we're, people check in, like our employees check in with us and like, hey, um, this is done, do you need help with this and this and this, right? So I think giving that option to your employees kind of also helps retain them yeah. in the future. Um, it helps, you know, retain good, you know, people on the good team, talent. right? Like you're, you're literally teaching your your values to, you know, your employees, you, you hope that they they remain, you know, yeah. um, with the company. So definitely that, that flex type of schedule. Um, and then basically making everybody almost a CEO of yeah. their own department, right? You know, like for example, my team, like I obviously will give them the guidance of where to go, but I want them to kind of figure it out, yeah. right? I'll give them the resources to figure it out. If I see a thread on on Twitter, it's like, hey, check this out. Or if there's a course, I'll be like, yo, check this out. Yeah. This way, like I want I want you to want to learn, yeah. right? So that, and, and I, I think it, it makes up a, a good employee too, that the fact that they want to learn. So, yeah. um, you know, basically giving them the responsibility to to learn on their own and 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 you know find themselves as well in the in the future. Yeah. That's strong. Um I think the 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 last couple of things that you know for us creates a really strong operational framework is like when we kind of look at things like Amazon or B2B, right, which is our retail. Um I think sometimes when you're a startup, especially, you often look at like new revenue or like 
automatic revenue as like something that's just should be expected all the time. And I think where people get really stuck is when they get tied to that revenue and, and the expectation of, oh yeah, that'll always be there. The only revenue that will always be there is the one that you can control, which is D2C, right? And I think for us, one of the biggest pieces operationally that I think we focus on is, is we're going to make sure the business is sustainable as a D2C business. The retail, the Amazon, the B2B, all of that is cherry on top, right? right? If it comes, that is great. But if it's zero, this business can still survive, right? Sure, we'd maybe burn a little bit more cash or this or that, but operationally, this business is built for D2C and we cater to everything else. Now, it's tougher to do that with a very growth mindset of, well, we need these many doors or this or that. So yeah, we're not, we're not there yet, but what we've built till this date has been with the mindset of, we're going to make sure that we're sustainable as a company with what we have and not so much expect one-time revenue to be constant revenue. Um, and I think that's just like a more mental mindset than it is really fundamentally doing anything. So two takeaways for every episode to, uh, to chew on. Um, at least the one that I have in mind is um, if you are in marketing and you have a marketing team, what I would do is go back and kind of write down the list of apps that I mentioned, set up a meeting with your team, and just go through each one and assess if that app will be yeah. valuable to you right now like that. and sign up. So something to chew on from my end, team, people, and who your company is surrounded by is probably the most important piece right now in today's climate, today's ecosystem, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you don't have this set up, I want you guys to at least look at this if you're a founder. I want you to go look into creating phantom shares at your company. I want you to go and look into creating an employee stock program. And you can do this in a very scrappy way. You can do it in a very official way through lawyers and stuff. Either way, you should be able to manage to at least look into this. Because knowing that one day you should empower all of the employees that have stuck around and built the company, you need to start that today. You can't start that one day. Um, so look to give back to your employees. And uh, starts with an employee stock program, in my in my opinion. I love it. Chew on that. Chew on that. Cheers. <laughs>